clear, you can't go anywhere, right? I don't leave, I'm going to set you and this whole room on fire. Security footage from the fire? Right, I've been binge watching it all night. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here and cause all kinds of trouble. How are you, Claire? I'm giving the circumstances. Claire, my name is Detective Parker. I'm going to be investigating uh, the incident. Okay, Parker, I know that it's your mission to figure out what happened there, but let's just be real. I have powers. I have problems. Those two don't go together. I would try over and over again to control them. Over and over again. And at some points, I just lose control. And whatever you're talking about, in that instance, I lost control. Controlling what I had was like a craft to me, like a dance with my inner devil. But I just blacked out. I can't really answer any of your questions. But if you want, you can blame this on me because that's probably what you're going to do anyway. What was happening? I need to leave. Clear. I can't be in here. Clear. I need to leave. The fire that happened in the orphanage, Clear. What happened? I have what you want to do is get me in trouble. Are you going to believe me? I just want to get the truth of what happened. drag came along and I before then I was like ew drag queens they're ugly and disgusting and they're, they're, uh, no and now I'm one so funny how that worked out Drag is a culture and a phenomenon, dating all the way back to 1953 being used in movies for men to play female characters to club scenes in New York in the 1990s. Drag has been everywhere. Drag has changed my life for the better, definitely. Uh, it's definitely made me a more happier person. Before Hazel, uh, I, I was sad. Uh, I was a lost and confused kid. Drag race came around, and then I wanted to be drag started giving me hope. As they say in the drag community, it gave me life. It's like one of my favorite memories actually was starting to um, do drag in front of everyone that I knew. Um, I did it like I did it again like I said I did it when I was 13. Uh, I hardly showed anybody it. Or Hazel. Uh, I, I was sad. Uh, I was a lost and confused kid because um, just coming into terms with me being gay it was always something that you could easily avoid when you were a kid because it was like whatever you, like, you had your childhood to live you didn't really focus on that because that wasn't a thing to focus on but as soon as middle school hit when they started exposing a lot more stuff like gay and things like that it made me sit there and be like well damn that's me but I I would never want to come out because I noticed that a lot of kids would get bullied and things and the way that I was raised, I was kind of raised to believe that it was wrong and that it was not going to be a thing that I should do. So I was just kind of sad and I had a lot of um, personal problems, personal demons that I needed to exercise. So, um, but when Drag Race came around and when I wanted to be in drag, that, came, that brought something else to me. It started giving me hope. It started giving me, um, as they say in the drag community, it gave me life. 
<laughs> like, I, I was getting my life after that, so, yeah. Drag has become increasingly popular due to a reality TV show, RuPaul's Drag Race. In the show, there are 14 new queens that come every season and compete in various challenges in order to be crowned RuPaul's Drag Race champion. No, we're preparing for RuPaul's Drag Race season 10, watch out. Okay. <laughs> She knows her style. Her style is very realized because she loves to go with the goth and very dark look, but she can be versatile at times. Ramon. Ramon's just that type. He's very pitbull. I, I feel like I'm gonna get shot for saying that, but he's very pitbull because he's, he's that ladies man that's very Hispanic and very total with things. Um, and the next queen is, um, Krista. Krista, she's a new queen, so her style really, to me, I haven't really seen it completely develop yet, but that's obviously because she's just starting out. She's a very um, happy and very smart queen. She, um, she's a bubbly one too. She likes to play the ditzy blonde role, but um, you know, that's just her. Uh, she's really adorable. Uh, a serious message that I would have for the LGBT community and any beginning drug queen or king out there, or anyone in between. Uh, I would just say, uh, hone your abilities, know who you are, and don't change for anybody. Learn that there's constructive criticism and that there's just plain, straight up rude uh, behavior out there and just know the difference between the two and learn. Uh, to take things away from both of them. You know? I mean, you can definitely learn a lot from constructive criticism, but um, rude comments, you know, the thing that you can take away from that is learning how to tune that out. And also learning how to enhance it. So then that way, when the haters come to your door, you'll be like, oh, you want more? hours of driving school, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew. I wish I could have saved you. I wish I just remembered. 